Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. And in this video, I want to show you guys some more new gameplay. This morning, there was a live stream, a PlayStation Hong Kong live stream, and during that, they played through the E3 demo that we've seen time and time again, the one in the Ancient Forest, where you see the Great Jagras at the beginning, then they go on to fight the Anjanath, introduce it to the Rathalos, show you how monsters interact. The typical flow is largely the same, however, they played the demo out differently, they used different weapons, namely dual blades, insect glaive, switch axe and light bowgun. They also equipped a few different armor sets, a different mantle, they took a slightly different route and interacted with the kind of environment in slightly different ways. So while the environment and the monsters they fight are things we've seen before, the actual kind of gameplay does still contain some pretty exciting new stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the most important parts. We're just gonna kind of jump to all the parts that you guys wanna see. And of course, I'll skip past all the filler stuff in between. So if you do enjoy this, like we super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions, but kicking things off right at the very beginning of the hunt. First things first, they are playing as a female character and the female character is using the Anjanath armor, which is pretty cool. We've of course seen what the male Anjanath armor looks like from the English gameplay, but we now know what the female Anjanath armor looks like and it is pretty sweet. It's got this kind of cool, almost sort of furry cape, like top half of the cape, which looks really nice. And they've also got these kind of pointy ears as well. So I do really like the design for this. And of course, on top of that, they are currently using the dual blades. I'm gonna assume these are sort of like the bone dual blades, one of the sort of starter ones. So no fancy weapons, but either way, that is still something new. Now jumping over to the first time they start fighting, they actually decide to lead the Anjanath out the cave the other way, because typically they go out the kind of main entrance, which takes them into the sort of foresty area. But this time they've opted to sort of lead it out into this open area where there's kind of these rocks. It's a big incline and they use this as a means to demonstrate some more of these sliding attacks. Of course, we know that when you run down a sort of steep hill, you can slide down and we saw like the hammer has like a really crazy cartwheel attack at E3. We saw that the greatsword has like a rising attack. And for the dual blade, you can actually go into this pretty insane sort of vertical spinning top or cartwheel where you spin around, slice down the monster's back. It does look pretty awesome over the top and whatnot, but do really like that. We also get another good demonstration of the shock frog. So this is basically another one of those kind of environmental things you can interact with. You'll see these frogs around and you can either shoot them or kick them and doing so will then have it explode into this sort of static gas. And if the monster walks into that gas, it'll then get shocked for a short period of time. So it's kind of like an environmental shock trap. There are a few of them around there. You can kick them. They are free for you to use and they seem to have a pretty uh, kind of sizable radius. I also just really like how the frogs actually look. These are sort of like bright yellow, sort of happy frogs, with these massive bellies, and then you kick them and they blow up. But anyway, Moving on from there, there is a different slide attack if you are in demon mode. Of course, they demonstrated this a couple of times. The first time wasn't the clearest demonstration, but you seem to have this sort of like air dash kind of thing. Same sort of premise in that you'll go into like a cartwheel spin kind of thing, but off the back of it, you then seem to sort of dash through the air. When trying to leave the area, we then get a look at the fact that monsters can still pin you. It seems to kind of work in a slightly different way and that you don't necessarily have that sort of, you know, indicator that you are being pinned. But the point is, the hunter kind of got grabbed up in a pretty pretty vicious way by the Anjanath, then slammed down, and the actual in-game voiceover from the tutorial lady basically said, you're pinned, look for a opening to try and escape. So that does still make a return. After that, we then go to look at a mounted attack with the dual blades. So of course, as we've seen before, you can use the hunting knife to sort of do your general stabs as you would always when you're mounting a monster. But when the opportunity presents itself, you can switch to your primary weapon. And in this case, they do a demon flurry on the tail and it results in a tail cut. And thankfully this time they do actually go on to carve the tail. I know in the English gameplay they cut it off and then just left it, which drove everyone crazy. But this time they actually carve it and they do actually get an Anjanath tail. So for those of you guys that are new to Monster Hunter, that is often why you cut those parts. Typically there will be a part that you might not be able to get unless say you sever a tail or you break like a horn. And while you won't necessarily always get a tail, sometimes you can get things like scales. Generally speaking, that is why you do it. If you want a tail or you want a rare part, you cut it off, you then carve it mid-hunt and that gives you an extra option. Another interesting thing that we have actually seen before, but it was especially prevalent in this gameplay, was that you'll see these trees around and they have these vines hanging from them. When the monster sort of smashes into them, they break the tree and the vines fall on the ground. That actually becomes sort of like a, I guess kind of like a pitfall trap in that if the monster then walks into those vines, it then gets trapped. So again, another good use of the environment to, you know, like hold down the monster, get some free damage in. That's pretty cool. 
Then after that, they took their first visit to the base camp. I say the first visit because they're going to be doing this a few times throughout the gameplay. First time they go back, we of course dive into the tent. One thing that we have seen again in the past, but again, I kind of wanted to call out here, is that the weapon that you have equipped actually appears in the back of the tent, which is just kind of cool. We've seen it with the great sword. We've of course seen it now with the dual blades. And of course, anytime you swap your weapons, it changes what is standing right there. But this time they're in the camp and they swap to the insect glaive. We also got a look when they were changing mantles at another item called a health booster. The description for it didn't show up, so I'm not entirely sure what it does, but in the name health booster, it's probably some kind of healing item. Now for the insect glaive, during some of the general gameplay, one of the main things I noticed is just sort of how much easier it looks to actually just gather and harvest extracts. I mean, of course, on 3DS, you if you have the kind of C stick, you can use that to move around. Of course, you can then fire at your insect accordingly, but that isn't necessarily the kind of most comfortable thing to use. So obviously playing on a PS4 controller with two nice analog sticks more than likely makes it a hell of a lot easier to actually go and farm extracts. Now, of course, in the background, there is just sort of some general insect glaive gameplay. One thing that I did notice is the air dash that we saw in yesterday's weapon videos, it seems to consume stamina. So for those of you guys that were like, hold on a minute, this is crazy, are you just gonna be like dash around non stop? It seems like that's the answer to our question. It consumes stamina on each dash, so I would imagine there is, genuinely speaking, a finite number of times you can actually dash before you will run out of stamina and then fall down to the ground. That being said, if you do have dash juice or mega dash juice, then maybe there is the possibility to dash endlessly in the air. But of course, that also relies on you being able to position yourself in the right place, hit the monster, and then kind of get that vault. Another thing we noticed was, of course, the use of paralysis knives. They actually go into your slinger now, so you don't throw them like you used to. You kind of put them into your slinger and fire them. So hopefully that helps with some precision, make it a little bit easier to hit with those things. After that, they also discovered a new hidden base camp, one they hadn't seen before. It seems that some of them won't necessarily be just, you know, like easy to find. Some of them might be hidden behind vines. You might have to kind of like crawl underneath things to find them. But of course, once you do find a base camp, you can then fast travel to it at any time. So the more you discover around the map, the easier it will be for you to navigate your way around. At this point, after their second visit to the base camp, they then swapped to the ingot armor, the Rocksteady Mantle and the Switch Axe. Now I'm going to speak more in depth about the armors tomorrow. I am working on an armor breakdown video talking about all the new ones that we saw in yesterday's gameplay, plus the ones we've seen in today's gameplay, so do expect an armor video dropping tomorrow. But for the time being, jumping out from there, we then of course do get some more gameplay of them using the Switch Axe. We see that really cool mounty attack again. It just seems to sort of flow really fluidly. You just kind of go from that upwards downwards attack, jump on the side of it, and of course it then launches you backwards. They also use this opportunity to demonstrate the Rocksteady Mantle. Of course, Rocksteady being a skill that stops you from kind of getting flinched or knocked back. So you can stand there. You'll still take damage, but you can stand there and sort of firm some of the attacks so they can use that if you are trying to you know demonstrate something and you don't necessarily want to keep getting tripped up and messed up so this was an opportune moment to demonstrate exactly that now they didn't do too much gameplay with the switch axe because they were running out of time and the audience wanted to see another weapon so they then went back to another base camp a different one so we've seen three different locations in this one demo and they then swapped to the light bogon now this was a uh, pretty short-lived because the monster at this point was pretty weak so they didn't really have a great deal to play with but they then went back to where it was sleeping and used this as an opportunity to demonstrate one of the new abilities where you can then fire these sort of charges into the ground it's worth noting you can do this three times because if you look at the ui every time they plant one of these this little counter sort of loses one so it seems you can plant three of these in total and you then shoot it, it causes explosions, and that then killed the monster. They're also using the Vault armor set in this one. So in this gameplay alone, we've also seen three new armor sets. Female Anjanath, the Ingot armor, and this Vault armor. And aside from that, the last thing we get a look at is, of course, the post-game kill screen. We, of course, have your typical UI on the right, where you then go and gather all your items. But, of course, in the background, we then have the freeze frame of you doing the attack. I'm really hoping, I'm really, really hoping they have the option to hide the menu, like they did in Monster Hunter Double Cross, because... For those of you guys that are new to Monster Hunter, this is one of those really cool things. When you finish a fight, you get this kind of freeze frame of the very second the monster dies. Now, sometimes you might just be in the middle of it, in the kind of middle of the fray, and you might not necessarily get a clear picture. But other times, you can actually get some really, really cool images like that. And of course, being on a console, it would be great if they do have the ability to hide the UI. Because if you can, you can then take a screenshot, share it on social media. That itself is just really nice. But anyway, for the time being... That is a quick overview of the most important stuff shown in the gameplay. So if you did enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. And be sure to tune back in tomorrow when we take a look at those armor sets. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out. これはですね、そのうち多分飛んでくると思いますよ。
佢話咧，佢好快就會飛過嚟，大家一定好快就知㗎啦。哦